This is weird, so I'm wearing a jacket and a shirt with buttons on it. I must be on my way to drive something pretty special. time I've driven a Rolls Royce, it was a Phantom, the make's flagship and likely the most obscene hunk of automotive excess I've ever had the pleasure of experiencing. The Phantom can also be had in extended wheelbase, coupe, and convertible forms, but for some one percenters, the Phantom is just a bit much, hence the introduction of the somewhat less ostentatious Ghost sedan in 2009. What we're here to drive today, though, is the Wraith, a roughly $290,000 coupe based on the Ghost, but with a distinct essence of its own. Why don't we let Dr. Philip Harnett, product manager for the Wraith, give us the lowdown. So what you have to know about this car is it's the fastest and the most powerful Rolls Royce we've ever made. Yeah. But then when you turn into the corner, you'd be like, ah, now this is slightly different. Very little body roll, and very well poised, the whole world is at your fingertips. This kind of like quarter angle really embodies for me everything that is Wraith, because you see we've widened the rear track, so you've got this very, very powerful rear track. You've got this tension in there horizontal line, but also this curvature line, which is like a bow and arrow. Everything's about to mm. poised and sprung. So the interior as well, everything's forward. It's like, right, let's go, let's mm. go and have a drive. We see lots of younger customers really going for this. For example, you know, if we look at the interior, mm -hmm. the, um, we wanted to do something new in the interior as well. And we have this wood here. We won't do it a traditional veneered wood. Do this open grain so you can feel it there. It's something you probably find more in a, in a luxury apartment or a yacht, one of those mm -hmm. fantastic yachts. Now, our challenge really will be to, to be able to build enough because, mm -hmm. you know, we still build every single car by hand. But you put all these things together mm -hmm. and it's just a completely different uh, experience to anything we've ever done before. Okay, so the Wraith makes a strong first impression, but so does Rolls-Royce in general. They might just be the most accommodating car maker in the world. The fascinating thing here is these are all individual pieces of veneer that are laser cut and then inlaid by hand. And you see the gradient that is created here? Yeah. This is a couple hundred year old process called sand shading. This is what, the, the glove compartment? Yes, yeah, that's just a glove box lid. <laughs> and, uh, and how long does it take to craft the glove box lid? Oh gosh, I, I mean the hours that are involved in that, I mean it's hundreds, uh, hundreds and hundreds. Tell me about this eagle. The Eagle, yeah. So this was an individual customer request. I mean, he was quite comfortable with us showing it again, but it just showcases like the le depth of detail we can achieve with embroidery. Yeah, he was particularly fond of it, and that was his wish. Uh, are there things that one could request that you would not want to do just because it's tacky? If I came to you and I said I would really, really love my Rolls Royce to have uh, Pikachu uh, you know, on the uh, headrest, <laughs> would you do that? We'd certainly investigate it, yeah. I mean, we never come back to a customer with a no. Um, if sometimes our hands are tied with homologation and legislation, but we will certainly seek out an alternative for you. Given all the pre-game build-up, actually climbing aboard the Wraith feels like a real event. Set all of its meticulously crafted bits in motion, and the car's transcendent elegance is immediately apparent. One of the things that's so interesting about the Rolls-Royce Wraith is that immediately it feels different from any other car I've driven. The steering is so, so light. Let's see how it accelerates. So making that possible is a 6.6 liter V12 that makes 624 horsepower, which means it's good for about 4.4 seconds, zero to 60. Plenty of acceleration. One of the amazing bits of technology that they've crammed in the Rolls-Royce Wraith is a location-based aware transmission. It knows that in about three corners, I'll probably need to be in fourth gear or whatever. You know what's weird about that? Is that when you really get on the throttle, Sometimes it goes to an intermediary gear first. It's like, okay, you know what's gonna happen up there, but shouldn't you know what I wanna do right here? Of course, complaining about the transmission is really missing the point. It's so quiet. It definitely floats over the road. Rolls-Royce makes no claim that this is a proper sports car, because it really isn't. It's a grand touring car but it's certainly the quickest and most agile of Rolls Royces you can buy. So if you absolutely need a Rolls Royce, but you want something that has some semblance of driving passion to it, then I guess this is your choice, isn't it? It's so relaxing. 
It's almost like you're not driving at all. It's almost like the car is stationary and the world is moving around you. When cars lack a meaningful connection with the road, it's often the result of engineering compromises, but not so with the Rolls-Royce Wraith. The isolation it creates isn't a compromise, it's the whole point. Spend some time with the Wraith, and all of its quiet indulgence starts to make a lot of sense. Part of the charm of a Rolls-Royce is that it makes the ridiculous seem tasteful. For example, a statue of a winged woman named the Spirit of Ecstasy emerges from the Wraith's nose when the vehicle is unlocked. The preceding sentence would sound laughable if I was talking about anything but a Rolls-Royce. The same holds true with the doors. They may look cool, but try closing one while seated. The power closing function addresses the issue, but adding that functionality just to have doors that open the wrong way might seem crazy if, you know, it wasn't a Rolls. The Wraith is a four-seater, and as you climb in the back seat, you might think, oh, it's got that fastback design, I bet it's pretty uncomfortable back there, but it's not. There's plenty of space, the headroom is decent, and even though it might feel a little claustrophobic because of that dipping roof line, it doesn't because, oh, look, there's no B-pillar. Check that out. There's no reason to feel claustrophobic back here. I mean, there's reasons to feel poor back here. That's what I'm feeling, but it's not claustrophobia I'm experiencing. Normally, I would climb out of this, but uh, it's a little undignified for the Rolls Royce. Instead, I'm going to sit here and think about my position in the universe. On paper, the starlight headliner seems like a really, really goofy idea. Yeah, we're going to make it look like some stars up in the headliner. It's actually really, really cool. When you get in here and you open the door, the lights come on. And each one of these, there's over 1,400 individual uh, little light pipes that are uh, shining in here. And each a different levels. And you can customize it too. So if you want to match it on the day that the Titanic went down, and you want that skyline, a Neil deGrasse Tyson worthy skyline, you can absolutely do that. I mean, it's going to cost you a lot extra, but you're buying a Rolls Royce. What's 20 grand to you? Oh no, it might start to rain. I better use the uh, sweet umbrella built into the car. It's so cool. The interior is properly luxurious. There's a ton of leather everywhere, and this wood is fantastic. It looks kind of modern, and it's, it's so intricate. Ah, I just love the craftsmanship. Organ-style poles. Everything is metal. <laughs> it's beautiful! <laughs> With the Wraith aimed at a younger buyer, Rolls-Royce wisely included a modern infotainment system, controlled by this tactily luscious knob. Oh hey, it's the spirit of ecstasy again! In terms of entertainment, the Wraith is an absolute stunner. Take a cabin that's quiet like a windless desert, add the optional $8,000, 18-speaker, bespoke 1,300-watt audio system, and wonderful things happen. Just remember, using it to listen to money will make you look like a royal tool. You know, without meeting them, you might imagine the people responsible for the Rolls-Royce Wraith as elitist or pretentious. The truth is, they're friendly, welcoming, passionate, and extremely accommodating. Funny thing, the Wraith is every bit as pleasant as the folks who make and sell it. As it turns out, cars are a reflection of the humans who produce them. So who buys one of these things? Well, the world's financial elite. The kind of people that can demand the best exactly as they like it. In the automotive realm, the Wraith is a perfect expression of affluent willfulness, providing boundless comfort while asking little of its owner, aside from big sacks of cash. Financial mortals like me might only appreciate it as a beautiful, wonderfully crafted, very expensive oddity, but for those who've leveraged their focus, determination, and guile to join the highest reaches of society, the Rolls-Royce Wraith, hand-built in Goodwood, England, makes a fine reward. Whew. Glad we found you.